Hello and welcome back to our exciting series on making tic-tac-toe. This is Andrew. This is going to be, I think, the fourth video in the series where we're going to be checking to see if we have a winner. And this is actually going to be the beginning of making that whole system because I think it's going to take maybe a couple videos for doing it. So we're going to be starting that now, but probably not going to be finishing it because it's probably a little bit too much to slam into one video. So let's go ahead and let's get started. We're going to be editing two of our scripts today. We're going to be editing our, our board script as well as our, our main script. And in our main script, we're going to be calling a function within our board script that's going to be checking to see if we have any horizontal or vertical winning X's or O's essentially. So the first thing that we're going to do is going to open up our board so we can add a couple of functions to it. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a function that's going to return a boolean. And we're going to be calling that public bool check for winner. And the check for winner is going to be doing a few things. It's going to be checking for the vertical, the horizontal, and the diagonals. And we're going to have a repeatable piece of code that we're going to be using for each of those things. So just so Visual Studio stop yelling at us, let's go ahead and return false. And then we're going to make a similar function down below that, which is going to be a private bool. That's what value we're going to return. Check values. We're going to add an int for an argument for our first index and a second int for our second index. And I'll talk a little bit about that once we start to write the body of this function. So let's go ahead and return false here as well. But before we start editing any of this stuff, we're going to be going to our main script so we can call that within our switch. So I believe we're, we can just put it here for right now that we're going to be calling our, our reference to our board using mboard and we're going to be calling check for winner since that's going to be our public one. All right, cool. And since it's going to return a bool, I think we're going to use a temporary variable just for now to see if it's working. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So let's name this bool test equals and this isn't something we're going to have in our final project but since we're sort of doing this part in chunks we'll just have this right now and we'll just put an if here that says if test meaning if uh, there is a winner let's print something so we'll just print winner winner there we go and now let's hop back over into our board script so we can fill out both of those two functions all right so like i said before we're going to probably do the horizontal and the vertical on this. So we're gonna check for our horizontal first and then our vertical. And we're also gonna have a Boolean for our index. It'll be int i will be zero. And we're gonna just put it there so we can reuse it in each of the for loops down below. And once I write out the for loops, I'll explain it a little bit more. So we're gonna make a for loop. It's gonna start at i equals zero and i is going to be less than or equal to six. And i plus equals three. Well, three, there we go. And we'll put our curly braces in, and then we're gonna be, ma be making a call to our check values function. And it's gonna be if exclamation point check values i and then i plus one and then continue. Okay, so let's reformat that to make sure we're good. Okay, cool, so what does this do? So in this for loop here, i is starting at zero, and i, when it's less than or equal to six, we're going to be adding three to it. And let's actually go back into Unity, so hopefully this will better illustrate how this works. So we have these rows, right? And each of them consists of three. And if we have an index of zero, it's gonna be right there. And if we have an index of three, it's gonna go zero, one, two, three and then for six is going to be three four five six so what we're doing is we're getting the index along this column right here and we're going to get that value and then we're checking it so we can see both of these at the same time so i've oriented this a little bit better so we can kind of see our for loop right next to our tic-tac-toe and we have this i plus three. So we do i, i equals zero, and then we're gonna be checking i plus one, then i plus two. And as you can see, we have according to these two, 
right here. So let's see if I can orient my Visual Studio. And if you notice, we need to have another statement to check for this one. So what we'll do is we can copy this, paste it, and we'll do I plus two. And then we'll scroll down as well. So we can start to look at this function as well. So to sort of reiterate again, what's happening here is we're using this for loop to sort of climb up the rows here. And then we're using these two if statements to check that value with these two cells. And since we're going zero to six and going up three each time, it's gonna be zero, three, then six. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's pretty much what takes care of checking for the horizontal. One thing that we would need to do is also return true here. And you may be wondering, well, Andrew, you haven't exactly explained too much about this continuum, what that is. So what that does is in contrast to the keyword break, continue basically says, hey, if this is true, then we want you to continue. And that is going to skip the iteration of the loop and go to the next index. So if we are at zero and we get to this first if statement right here, and it's, not, and it's false, then it's gonna go, hey, if this is false, if these two don't match, then don't even bother checking this one, just go to the next one. And that differs from break, because if, that was, if these two values were different, it would break out of this loop entirely and not check any of the other rows. So what's gonna happen is that if, it, if these two match, and if these two match, then we're not going to continue. And if we don't continue, we're gonna reach this return true, which is gonna return true and say check for winner. So hopefully that all makes sense. We're gonna go ahead and move on to vertical and it may start to make a little bit more sense. If you don't get it right now, that's okay. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and make another for loop and it's gonna be i equals zero. You know, we may be able to just copy, let's just copy this for right now. Let's not type all that out. I don't and you probably don't either. So let's go ahead and do that. In this case, we're gonna be doing two, and i is just going to be plus plus. And I'll explain more of that in just a second. And we'll do that, cool. So this is more or less the same logic as we had before. However, we're adding it a little bit differently. Instead of going up the columns like this, we're gonna be going across the rows. So we're starting at zero, and we're gonna be going to one and two seeing as that we are iterating at one per, and it's less than equal to two. So we're going zero, one, two. So what we're doing is if our index is two, we need to check and see if these two cells have the same value. So if we're at zero, we need to check the value that is right here. And our way of doing that is adding three to it. So we're doing one, two, three, and it's gonna get that value right there. And then if we wanna get the value there, then we'll have to add six. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. And it works just like that. And the same thing more or less applies as we get to one and then we get to two as well. And then the same sort of logic applies to the continue as well as the return true. And the thing is, we're gonna check our horizontal and then if we check our vertical, and if we don't return, return true, then we're gonna use this return false to say, hey, there isn't a winner, even if we checked both the horizontal and the vertical. And we're gonna be focusing on the diagonal, I think in the next video, so let's go ahead and add a comment here for a diagonal. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and actually fill out this sort of check values function that we're calling here. And maybe then, it, if you haven't got it or understood it yet, it may sort of, up here there. So let's go ahead and begin to fill that out. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to, we're passing in the index of these cells here, but we're gonna need to get the value from the cells, the value being whether it's an X or an O, and comparing it. So let's, we're gonna be comparing some strings. So let's make a string. We're gonna make two string variables actually, but we're just gonna start on our first one. We're gonna call it first value, and we're gonna make it equal cells first index we're going to get the the label of it the label if you remember is that text the text that's going to be outputting the x or the o and remember if we labeled our made our text and we called it label because we have to get the text of it the, 
the text property. And I named it label because text.text .text may be a bit confusing sometimes. So what this is going to do is we're getting, we're using that first index and we're plugging it into our, our cells array here. We're getting the text component of it that we've called label and we're getting the actual X or the O using the text property. And then we're going to copy that and we're going to be making a second string for our second value. Second value. And we'll be replacing our first index with our second index. There we go. So now we have, as an example, if we scroll up a little bit here, in our horizontal, if we were checking zero and we were checking one, we would be checking this one and this one. And we're going to be passing zero and one into this. So it's going to get the X and the O value of these two. And now this is a good way of, or a decent way of doing this because if there isn't an X or an O, it's just going to be an empty string. So it sort of resolves pretty easily. So one thing we will be doing actually along that same sort of train of thought is checking if there really is a string within our labels. So we're going to say if our first value, if our first value is equal to nothing, by using our, those double quotes there, we're going to be doing two vertical lines. And if our second value is equal to that, we're going to return false. So all this is basically doing is, hey, if either of these values are empty, then go ahead and return false because we don't need to compare them. And now let's actually do the checking of if they are the same. So if our first value is equal to our second value, let's return true, else, whoops, we have to put a semicolon so that will resolve itself. Return true, semicolon, else, return false. And we'll just bring this guy up here. Okay, now I think that's, I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and re-maximize this and check our main. Let's go ahead, before we get started, let's just change this from test to has winner. All right, because I think we may actually end up keeping this. So let's do, go ahead and do that. And then let's save it and let's go back into Unity. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's hit play and let's see if this works. So if we click and we're playing it, we shouldn't see anything. And I think let's go ahead and see if we can get a horizontal. There we go. Cool. So we got have a winner there. But remember, we don't have any systems yet to actually end the game or reset anything. So all we've done is detect to see, oh, hey, there's a winner. So I believe we can actually have two winners in a row. OK, cool. And that also shows that our vertical should work as well. Let's see. There may be some bug fi fixing that we have to do, but there we go. Yeah, I think there's I think there's a bit of a bug with that. So we'll probably have to look at that a bit later. Actually, I don't think it's much of a bug because since we're not resetting the game no matter what, once we have a winner, it's always going to have a winner. So that's nothing to terribly worry about at the moment. So I think everything is more or less working in the way it should be. So I think in the next video, we're going to be continuing this diagonal. And then I think we're going to be resetting the board and doing all that other good stuff, as well as checking to see how many turns have elapsed so we know that it's been a draw. So I think that about does it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you liked the video, you can feel free to leave a like. If you would like to continue with the series with each of the videos, you can subscribe. And if you have any questions or need any help, feel free to leave a comment. I check it fairly regularly and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But until then, I will see you next time.